Hello, my pastor friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Carfist Podcast, my car office. I'm your host, Greg Gross. Please buckle up and enjoy the ride. Welcome back to another episode. We are in season two, obviously, still. This is the second episode of season two, but this is episode 15 total. Total. 15 episodes. We are cruising the USA, cruising the world. Hey, do you remember that video game, by the way? Like, I loved that video game. Cruising the world, cruising the USA. Like, I think I played that on, like, Nintendo 64. Man, you know, I just think of these most random thoughts as I am recording these episodes, but that's okay. And also, you can, like, play them in the arcade. Remember, like, you sit down, and you got those cars, cruising the world, cruising the USA. Uh, I crushed that game. Like, I won every single time. There's no way. There's, I need to find that game. But, hey, well, anyways... Here we are, and uh, I'm so uh, excited to jump into this episode with you today. Um, as you can see, I'm not wearing a hat. I know. I'm, I'm allowing you to see the beautiful baldness that is going on here, the receding hairline. Uh, some people are like, Greg, why don't you just completely bick it, go down, Mr. Clean style. And you know what? I appreciate it. I'm, I guess I'm just not ready for that. Maybe, maybe. I don't know if my wife is ready for that, but maybe someday I will be. But for now, this is it. I'm not as scruffy as I was last week. Um, I shaved everything like that. But hey, again, I'm just, uh, I'm me, you're you. Let's go. Okay. So a little, um, I just want to thank everybody for being here again. First of all, I just always want to take a moment. Thank you so much for all your support, um, all your your likes, your shares, your um, subscribing. Uh, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, all my listeners out there on Facebook. Um, if you see this initially on Instagram and then go over to either Facebook, YouTube, Apple or Spotify, whatever it is. I just want to thank all my listeners. I want to thank again, all the support, all the feedback, um, all the people that text me or call me that know me personally. Um, I just always want to take a moment to thank all of you because I keep doing this, like I've told you before, more so for me. I just do because this has become a really, uh, it really has. This has become therapeutic, my passenger friends. But I know some of you have really enjoyed this. So that's also I do it for you, my passenger friends. So we're going to recap a little bit. So, man, we're in season two. Last last week was was a humdinger, huh? Uh, definitely got some fun feedback from some of you from that one. And uh, I kind of, I mean, this episode's called Meet the New Greg Part 2. Because I'm like, well, we're kind of still meeting the new Greg. Um, and last week, man, we, we talked about a bunch of new stuff. I told all of you that I'm in a season of deconstruction, which meant I'm asking God a lot of questions. I'm doubting things. I'm, I'm uh, just really digging into things I've never have in my faith. And we're going to go more into that actually today. So you're welcome. I know that's such a fun, controversial, hot topic for all, for you all. Um, and I just kind of wanted to define, I think I defined this a little bit last week about what is meet the new Greg question mark, exclamation point, question mark mean, because, um, I guess that would be important, right? So, I mean, uh, meeting the new Greg, I'm literally having you all come along with me to meet the new Greg. Like over these episodes and however long this goes, I'm opening up my life one episode at a time. I've been doing that from the beginning, right? Opening my life one episode at a time. Like almost like um, I'm uh, discovering things for the first time with you on these episodes. Like a lot of the thoughts I share, actually many of the thoughts are things that I'm literally discovering the day of, day before, week before, or within the last couple months, and I'm like still rediscovering, discovering them. And as I'm meeting the new Greg, you're meeting the new Greg. Um, very, again, unpolished, unplugged, um, raw, real, and um, we're all we're all in this together. We're all moving forward together, and so this is very like. 
I've never done stuff like this before just to be so vulnerable and open and just not honestly caring what anybody thinks because because I really don't um otherwise why would I keep doing these episodes now are some episodes harder than others absolutely it's I'm not gonna lie and, and sit here and say it's easy just to do this it's not but I feel like it's necessary because like I said it's therapeutic for me I really do hope these episodes um can help some of you or people that you share this with um, to be open enough to dig in and discover that there's more parts of them that they can figure out too. I feel like we're always should be becoming, um, becoming something new, um, taking out some old, rediscovering new, and um, trying to figure it, piece that all together um, into this beautiful thing called life did that make sense i don't know if it didn't well there you go uh as you can see uh, I'm, I'm wearing a shirt today i'm always about apparel my hats my shirts this is delano wrestling i don't know how well you guys can see this on youtube uh obviously if you're not watching it you can't but it says delano and then r.u.t.e. r-u-t-e wrestling delano r-u-t-e wrestling which Anybody can guess what R-U-T-E stands for? Anybody? Can I hear you? I can't hear you. But if someone said, are you tough enough? That is what it stands for. R-U-T-E means are you tough enough? And you know what? Yes. This is going to go. This is going to relate to the episode today. R-U-T-E. Are you tough enough? I looked up the word tough and I loved what I found. Tough is you're able to endure hardship or pain, strong enough to withstand adverse conditions, strong and flexible. Um, that's what tough means. Are you tough enough? Hardship and pain, man. Anybody out there, any anybody at all listening to this right now ever um, endure some hardship and pain in your life? Yeah. Same here if you've listened to my story. Uh, strong enough to adverse conditions. Um, same thing. Uh, many of you, I think all of us in our own relative reality. Um, and, and, and here's the kicker, which, you know, what we're going into more today in the episodes coming up is probably the most adverse conditions we have to withstand is right in here. Within here. This is where all the adverse conditions in your mind my passenger friends. That's what I'm pointing to. Um, your mind has some of the mo most or the most adverse conditions going on that we have to withstand, that we have to unravel, that we have to, again, I'm going to continue to use this word, rediscover and discover for the rest of our lives. But the last thing I love that I found about this definition tough um, is, is just the difference between strong but flexible. Are you strong but flexible? And I love that word flexible when it comes to being tough because I think that is something that many people aren't willing to be or willing to recognize when it comes to the word tough. Flexible, flexibility, being willing not to be so stubborn or stuck in our ways. Um, are we willing to dig, again, discover, rediscover, ask questions, go places in this adverse conditions of our mind that are probably the toughest things that we will do to tap into it, it, in our life. Because my pastor friends, when we start tapping into what's between our ears and help others uh, and allow others to help us do that too, I think that is, better lack of words, the scariest thing, the toughest thing, the most fulfilling thing in the end that we can do. So are you tough enough? Are you T-E? Are you tough enough? Um, which, by the way, <laughs> side note, one of my best friends today, as I'm recording this, uh, he, he might be done. He's doing his second Tough Mudder. And I just, you know who you are, and I just want to applaud you. And um, I just want to give you a shout out because... Um, you're one of my best friends and you're awesome and your story is incredible 
and for you to be doing tough mutters is incredible. You know that because there's a time that you weighed 417 pounds and now you are around 250 pounds and you're running tough mutters now and you took back your health and um, man, I had such a great honor to be a part of that journey with you um, as your health coach, but more, more importantly, your friend. And um, my hat is already off to you, my friend. Again, you know who you are. Keep killing it. Keep going. Keep becoming the best version of yourself. And keep being tough. Keep being tough. So that's just a little little plug, plug um, for one of my best friends. It's kind of coincidence. Tough Munner. We're talking about tough today. So there we go. Um, so we're going to... Man, I'm just looking at my notes here. <sighs> hmm... I'm going to go back to a couple things in my last episode before we really dig into the main thing of this episode today. And I'm going to start off with this statement because my last episode, um, again, was was up to this date, the most unpolished, unplugged episode I believe I've ever done. And I'm just going to continue to stay on that train. Like I said, I believe there's no other way I can go now. Um, I'm starting to really find a rhythm in that. And so I saw something the other day and it really helped me also um, put some put some words, put some legs to the season of life that I'm in. And so I read it and I'm like, man, that resonates so much with me. So and, and hopefully this resonates with you uh, to maybe help understand maybe where you're at or or help you understand more where I'm at in the season of my life as we're talking about um, meeting the new Greg, right? Question mark, explanation point, question mark. So uh, I have it written down here. It says, and this is how I feel. This is literally where I feel like I am. And I tried to explain this and I probably did explain this pretty well in my last episode. So um, I feel like I used to have all the answers. Like I feel like I was a lot more versed on, you know, chapters and pages in my life. I I feel like I used to walk around and, 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 and preach and teach and share. Like I felt like I used to have all the answers. Now, I'm unsure. And uh, kind of like I said last week, you know, the more I know, the less I know. And the moment I think I know something, I know nothing. Thank you, John Maxwell. And so I feel like I used to have all the answers. Now I'm unsure and I'm still unfolding. But as I'm unfolding, I really am enjoying the wonder and mystery of this life probably more than ever before probably more than ever before so again my passenger friends that's kind of a great way for me to um again share with you where i'm at i feel like i used to have all the answers but now i'm just unsure and i'm okay with that i'm still unfolding i'm not saying i've arrived i don't think i'll ever arrive on certain topics and if you feel like you need to that's great but i just don't think we really need to as much as we think we do um especially on certain things but i'm really am enjoying the wonder and mystery of life because my goodness life is wonderful and it is a wonder and it's always going to be a mystery and we are not supposed to try to figure out everything that'd be exhausting so if you're trying to do that i mean bless your heart but i'm not going to do that um and by the way If you are somebody that's trying to figure out all the answers or you think you know all the answers, can I challenge you with a question right off the bat? Ask yourself, why do you have to have the right answer about certain things? Just let that sit for a second. Why do you, because I've been there before and I still ask myself about certain things that I think I have the answers about. Why do you, why do we, why do me? Why? Why do we have to have the right answers, or why do we have to be right about certain things, especially things that are gray? Remember that whole black and white and gray areas. Um, and I don't know if this is you, but for me, and I think I shared this last week. I think many times we feel like we have to be certain about certain things. Um, when they're not even black and white and when they're gray, it's because it's more of a pride thing. It's more of, oh my gosh, if we allowed ourselves to go a different direction, it would literally unravel us and it would go against all of our nature and nurture and our upbringing and it would literally break 
things down in our life where we never want to go and we hate being corrected we hate to stand corrected and um i think it really goes back to a deeper issue of of pride or insecurity because man if we are wrong then we really have to do work to rediscover and discover so but that's my question for you like again i'm at a place where i'm enjoying this wonder and mystery of life and i used to think i have all the answers and i really don't and now i'm unsure about a lot of things and so that was my challenge to you like why if you are at this place with different things in your life maybe different topics that we're about to talk about on this episode or future episodes or past episodes why do you have to be right about certain things think through that think through that and i'm not even saying there's a right or wrong answer to that question but i'll leave you with that um and i also brought up i'm kind of jumping around thank you i mean i mean i don't even know why i'm saying thank you this is the carfus podcast my podcast so um if you've been listening to this any at all through the weeks you know i jump around and then i finally you know do some u-turns and and find a good find a good lane but right now i'm jumping around uh because i have some notes i wrote down um I also want to jump back to when I shared this in my last episode because I just wanted to put some more meat to this because I realized uh, after I said it and listened to it, which by the way, I rarely go back and listen to a full episode after I record it. But last week I did. Huh, maybe I should do that more apt- often, but like I've probably only done that a couple times with my episodes. I literally record it, process it, boom, get it out there. So, but last week I did. But I remember last week I talked about, hey, You don't, I talked about, hey, be very careful if you're a preacher or a teacher and if you're not a biblical or Hebrew scholar, uh, do better at not telling people what to think, but show them how to think. And I just wanted to clarify something in that episode. You don't have to obviously be a biblical or Hebrew scholar to be a preacher or teacher, okay? Or be a pastor or leader of a church or whatever. You don't have to be. I wasn't. Almost all my pastoral friends aren't biblical or Hebrew scholars, even though now God's brought a few into my life that I, I pick their brain and we talk and we have conversations. And it's beautiful because they are way smarter than me and they put the time in to be smarter than me and are educated in that way. And I'm just blessed to know people like that. So obviously not every pastor or whatever teacher, person in vocational ministry, ministry is going to be a biblical Hebrew scholar. So you don't have to be. But what I'm trying to say is, what I, what I want to share is, um, then just be careful. Be careful when you are teaching and preaching um, to not come off like you are. Okay? And remember to teach and preach um, and share with people um, not what to think, but show them how to think on their own, to dig deeper into their own stuff. So, there we go. That's a little side note. Uh, so now we're going to start to unfold today's episode because it's a part two of last week of something I said something and I want to correct one other thing because I had an epiphany. I had a huge like realization because I talked to one of my mentors this past week uh, that really just blew my mind and encouraged me like I was in tears by the end of the phone call and it was amazing but you know how i kept saying last week i'm messed up i'm messed up i'm messed up but i have peace i'm messed up i'm messed up i was sharing that with one of my mentors uh someone i also consider a friend and he really stopped me in my tracks and he said greg you need to stop saying that you're messed up because that's not accurate you need to stop telling people and telling yourself that you're messed up because that's negative it's a negative connotation great he goes greg you are not messed up based on everything you've shared with me based on everything that you're going through it doesn't sound to me like you're messed up it sounds like me like like you're human you're a human and you do human and, and you do humane things good bad or otherwise ugly beautiful whatever And God can handle it. He's handled it from the beginning of time and he's going to continue to handle it and he can handle you. You are not messed up. You're just human. And it's called humanity. And I'm like, gosh, you're so wise. And you're right. I'm not messed up. I'm just a human. And my pastor and friends, I'm pretty sure everyone listening right now is human too. And all those Bible stories and people in the Bible that I shared last week about he did this, he did this, he did this, boom, 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 boom. 
they weren't messed up either. They're human. And just how God was able to help walk them through things in all their humanity, he's doing the same with me. And he's doing the same with you. And so if you think you're messed up, and I, you know, it sounds weird, but I apologize for even bringing that negative thought and connotation into my episode and, and pouring it over myself. And if some of you attach that to yourself too, hey, let's cut that out. Let's, let's, let's rework that. Let's uh, rewire that. We're not messed up. I mean, maybe some of you are. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Whew. Um, but we're human. And uh, we were created by a big, awesome, loving, beautiful God. And he, um, and he can handle our humanness. He has from the beginning of time, and he, and he still is to, uh, to this day. So, um, and here's the other biggest reason why my mentor told me that I'm not messed up. Maybe to clarify, there might be some people that are um, in a less, lesser, better direction or, or like aren't being proactive to be a better human, let's say. Um, or maybe they're, maybe a better way to say it, they're not messed up, but, but they're, 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 they're not doing anything about staying in their mess, Okay. They're not doing anything, staying in their mess. And my mentor's like, man, Greg, like you, you're being proactive. As I shared with all you, my pastor and friends last week, I, I, I feel like I am. I'm not perfect. I have so much to learn, but I feel like I am putting myself in a position to be proactive. And my, uh, my mentor's reminded me, like, Greg, like you, you have a life coach. You, you have a health coaches. You have a, a therapist. You have different friends and pastors and mentors that you're talking to as you're in the midst of this season of your life. And so there's many people out there, he was telling me, Greg, that, that they're just sitting in their mess, sitting in the, the mess messy parts of their humanity, but they're not doing anything to put themselves in positions and places to rediscover, discover, ask questions to get better and become a better version of themselves. And um, that's another realization that, man, I'm not messed up. Um, and I'm not, I'm not willing to stay in the different messes of my life uh, that are going on more so in my mind and in my heart. I, I'm, I'm reaching out to people. Um, God is placing people in my life that are reaching out to me and, and I am going to those scary, dark, maybe messy places that need to be rediscovered and, and need to be, um, man, unfolded, right? Um, and, I, and I'm just going to say I'm proud of that because you know what? I could just be trying to do this all on my own, but I'm not. And, I, and I'm on here sharing with the world uh, through the Carfitz podcast, and, and this is therapeutic too. Uh, like I said, um, man. So, so, and, and here's the thing: like, I, and I'm, I want to dig. I want to, I want to share with you today why I have a life coach, why I have health coaches, why I believe in having a therapist, and why I believe keeping other f- close pastors and and mentors and spiritual leaders and friends in my life and, and why I think it'd be important for you to do all those things too. Um, for instance, like I'm just going to use this analogy, Aaron Rodgers, any football fans out there? Most of you probably know, or, you know, I'm a big football fan. Love my Green Bay Packers. Hello from Wisconsin. And, uh, you know, the whole Aaron Rodgers debacle, if you follow that, if you don't, whatever, but we're not going to get into that. But I just want to bring up Aaron Rodgers because yeah, everyone can have your opinions about him. Obviously, if you know anything about football, um, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the history of football. Okay, and he's not done yet, but he's one of the best quarterbacks in the history of football. And did you know that Aaron Rodgers has eleven coaches? Did you know that? So, uh, and he could have more. So, one of the best quarterbacks in the history of the NFL even needs eleven coaches. So what does that show us? What should that teach us, my pastor and friends? That to be great, to become, to become the best version of ourselves in any area of our life, we need other people. We need to be proactive and be able to be coachable and teachable and, and um, help to be molded by other people. Uh, and so, and that goes anybody that's been great in anything in their life, I guarantee they didn't get there on their own. 
I guarantee they did not get there on their own. And so, um, again, have I arrived? No. But I realized that uh, I read something the other day that difficult times can diminish us, define us, or develop us. We decide. Difficult times can either diminish us, define us, or develop us. We decide. And this has been a very... This could have been a very easy, easy season of my life where um, there were times where I did feel a little diminished. There were times that I did feel um, that I was being defined in certain ways that I didn't want or developed in certain ways that I didn't want. But we decide. I'm decide I've decided to invest time, energy, resources, finances into a life, health, therapist in, in other people. Okay. It it takes, we invest into what's important to us. So, so I knew that more than anything that I didn't want this season of my life to diminish me. I wanted to develop me and that development define me into the best me possible moving forward. But what are you doing? What are you doing in a certain season of life that you're in? When it comes to all these all these things, um, man. Sorry that I'm kind of all over the place today um, because my notes um, kind of have kind of brought me to that. But hmm. Okay, let me let me let me continue this thought. Why do I? I'm going to walk through those four things. Why do I have a life coach? I'm just going to be open and honest about each person why I have that in my life. So I have a life coach and I invested into a life coach because I want to continually do better at defining what my dreams are, what my goals are, and be confident in those things and move forward. Um, so one of the biggest things is like never walk, like my never walk brand, to live a life of perseverance. That's something I'm continuously trying to develop and become more confident in. And um, obviously I'm writing a book. I, I want to start another podcast called Team Never Walk here in the next months ahead. Be, be t- stay tuned for that. And I, I really want to add value and help people live lives of perseverance. I want to help develop people. And on my podcast, like I've shared before, I want to bring people on and have them share their stories of perseverance because I believe everyone has a story of perseverance and it should be shared to encourage and help other people through their life so they can live a life of perseverance. So. I have a life coach specifically to help me with my dreams, my goals, my confidence, my uh, what I can provide to this world and help this world um, when it comes to becoming just better. And so I have, I feel like I have unique abilities to do that, and that's something I'm really trying to rediscover. And I know having a life coach and that specific type of coach in my life can help me do that. So I have that in this season of my life. I have health coaches, not just one but multiple. Why? Because I even as a health coach. I'm never going to be able to arrive in my health. I know I can continually develop. Uh, uh, Health is not linear, my friends. It's it goes like this all the time, and mine has too. Even over the course of the last three plus years, if you have followed me, my health goes like this too. I mean, I I mean, when it comes to the scale, I mean, it could be up five pounds, ten pounds, then down, then this or that. Um, These different seasons of difficulties, I allow excuses and things to come in that that are starting to rob my health. Right now, I'm back on track more than I have been in my own health with my body than I've had in the past few months. And so I need people to hold me capable and accountable to those things. So that's why I have a health coach because I believe our health is probably one of the most important investments and assets to our life, right? If we don't take care of our bodies, our body is a temple of God. If we don't take care of that, everything flows out of our optimal health. What can we can do? Um, and we're going to pay for it now or pay for it later in a hospital bed, my pastor friends. Some of us like, I can't afford to eat healthier, be healthier, invest into my body. Well, again, you're going to pay for it now or pay for it later. And some things, yes, are outside of our circumstances when it comes to our health. Hello, I have a large intestine. Stick. I mean, I don't have a large intestine. and I have a small intestine sticking out of my stomach. It's called an ileostomy. I had no control over that. But now I have control of how I respond to that and how I fuel my body every day. So that's why I have a health coach. Um... I have a therapist and I am excited to meet with him for the first time here in, I think next week. I'll be meeting with him every other week. And because there's a lot going on up here 
And why should I try to figure it out on my own? That's insanity. That'd be foolish. No, I want to go to a professional that deals with talking to people that I can process to, that I can talk to about literally anything, and they can just listen and help me process and work things out and rewire things and rediscover things and discover new things. There's professionals out there for a reason. There's professional coaches, life coaches, health coaches, therapists, doctors. If if you're hurt and injured, you go to a professional, you go to a doctor. If your teeth need work, you go to a dentist. This is not brain science. If you need brain surgery, you go to a brain surgeon. So um, that's why I'm doing these things, my pastor and friends, because I want to continually in this season of crazy humanity things happening, I want to make sure... I'm doing the best things that will continue to take care of me because a better me is going to better others. And a better you is going to better others. And then why do I keep spiritual leaders in my life? I have spiritual leaders. I got pastors. I got, like I've already told you, I got biblical Hebrew scholars. Um, Like I told you last week, I might not be attending a four walls of a church right now, but I still have pastors I talk to on a weekly basis. Um with all different views and that still challenged me and I challenge them and iron sharpens iron and, and, uh, we talk about the Bible and we pray with one another. And, um, again, this goes for this different friends and different pastoral friends and, and beca- why, why? So why do I have all these people? I want to say again and again and again and again, because I, I know I can't do life on my own. And especially in such a unique season that I'm in right now, I need these people now more than ever. Now more than ever. And actually one of my, friends who's also a pastor um said something to me the other day and i'm going to read it to you um and if you're listening to this you know who you are who said this to me and i appreciate you so stinking much um and he knows what i'm walking through i shared with him what i'm walking through with this whole deconstruction and asking god questions and doubting and all that kind of stuff and and this is how he responded to me and this is why i need people like this in my life um because he gets it And he gets me, and he's gone through certain things himself, too. He goes, Greg, you're going to be, you're going to be a better, at a better place in the end, because God is going to reconstruct your faith. Greg, you're going to be at a better place in the end of all this, because God is going to reconstruct your faith, not around a building or a place, but around him. It's just the season in the middle that is disorienting. Because you've never been where God is taking you. So you don't know exactly what it will look like. (laughs) So true. But so good. Greg, you're going to be at a better place in the end. Because God is going to reconstruct your faith. Not around a building or a place. But around Him. It's just the season in the middle. Which I'm definitely in the middle. That is disorientating. Disorientating. Yes, it's definitely doing that. Because you never know where God is taking you so you don't know exactly what it will look like. Hello, my pastor friends. Buckle up. Here we go. We don't know where this is going to take us. Um, I don't know where this is going to take me. Um, and, 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 And I'm okay with that. Like I've shared with you over and over again. I'm okay with that. Uh, And I, I, I want to keep bringing it back to you. Are you okay with going to those places? Are you okay with being in broken places and, again, having your faith or beliefs or values all in, you know, broken pieces on the ground in front of you and not knowing what you're going to pick back up and what you're going to piece back together and what you're going to throw in the garbage forever? Um, But these are all things... I've come to a conclusion of, I I don't know if I shared this last week, I shared this on my social media, but it comes back to this, you know, having a, having a, having a life coach, having a a health coach, having a therapist, having other spiritual leaders in my life. It goes back to the, the first key to the best me is honesty. The first key to the best me is honesty. And that honesty starts with me. I have to be honest with myself before I can be honest with my life coach, my health coaches, my, my therapists, my, my spiritual leaders, my friends, my mentors. The first key to the best me is honesty. And so I know more than ever before, I need to be honest with myself. And that's really hard. It's like the hardest first thing and the most important first thing. And that's why it's the best thing to be honest, to be honest with yourself. 
Again, my challenge to you is why, what have you been doing to delay being honest with yourself? What, 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 why have you been delaying? Maybe some of you, maybe some of you have been delaying, procrastinating, um, being honest with yourself, or maybe finding a life coach, a health coach, a therapist, talking to other spiritual leaders that might have different views than you, to challenge you, to help you question different things in your life. I, I'm being super straight with you about me today, but what about you? Can I challenge you? Yeah, I can because this is my stinking podcast and I can. And if you're here on YouTube, I'm looking at you right in the eyes. I want to challenge you too. Not because I'm perfect or I've arrived. You already know that I haven't. And I know it's not about perfection, but direction, but I can confidently say I'm in a positive, proactive direction right now. I just shared it with you. But what about you? And why are you delaying? Why are you procrastinating? Why are you stuck? Why are you being stubborn? Why are you pointing at me? Why are you looking at the speck in my eye when there's a plank in your eye? Why are some of you so worried about me right now in the season of life that I'm in, but there's so many unpolished things about you that you haven't been willing to go and dig into because you're afraid, you're scared, and it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna pierce your pride and, and mess up your, you know, you don't wanna, you know, you don't wanna be humble about it. You don't wanna dig there because that's insecurity of yours. Stop being so worried about me. If you are, I hope you're not. And what can you do? Again, do you need a life coach? Do you need a health coach? Can you be honest with yourself? Do you need a therapist? Do you need to talk to some different spiritual leaders in your life? I don't know. That's for only you to answer. I can't answer that for you. I've answered that though for myself over and over and over again. But I challenge you to dig deep. It sucks. It's not fun. It hurts. It does. To dig deep, to rearrange, to, to, to rearrange some of your beliefs, your values, to, to rewire. Who said it was going to be easy? Man, it, it's lonely a lot of the times. I shared that too. There's a lot of emotion. Like, like when I was on the, on the phone, actually it was a Zoom call with one of my mentors. Like He was pouring into my life. He was saying some truths. We were having church. Tears are streaming down my face because he was resonating, hitting things in my soul that I needed to hear about my humanity. Again, instead of some of you being so concerned about me and where I'm at in life or, or like where I'm going to end up on some like topics, beliefs, values, have you taken time yourself to pause, to stop, to see where you're at? Like, who, who's in your corner? Who, who are you allowing in your corner? Who, who is challenging you? Who, I mean, again, do you have a life coach? Do you have a health coach? Do you have a therapist? Do you have different spiritual leaders or friends in your life from all different, you know, just different surrounding ideas and, like, people that think different than you? Are you willing to put people in your life that think different than you? That might offend how you think or feel about certain things? That's so important. Who are you allowing in your corner? Who do you have in your corner? When's the last time someone's challenged you? I'm challenging you right now. Are you allowing me to challenge you right now? Am I the first person to challenge you in a while? If so, hey, I'm honored. That's great. But if it stops here in the Carfitz podcast, I, you know, I don't know how far you're going to go when it comes to be continuously becoming a better version of yourself. Go seek out and find other people and professionals that can help you. Again, I appreciate your concern, I guess, your, your, your good intentions when it comes to me. Some of you just listen to this because you just want to get the deeper, juicier details about my life. That's great. I'm sharing it. But are you digging into the de deeper, juicier areas of your life? Are you allowing people to dig with you into the deeper, juicier areas of your life? Or are you just using this podcast to like distract yourself from you? If so, 
That's not okay. This podcast should help force you to the deeper and the juicier and the more humane, messy areas of your life. That's what I hope this podcast does. As I'm willing to be vulnerable and pour myself out to my passenger friends, I hope it helps you take steps forward to, again, rediscovering, to discovering, to asking more questions. Questions are okay. Doubting is okay. Being unsure about things, okay. Unfolding things, okay. Keeping things in this life a mystery is okay. Not having the answers is okay. But are you tough enough? Are you T E? Are you tough enough? Are you gonna are you willing to be strong enough, flexible enough? Not be so stubborn and stuck in your ways. To go to those places. That's what I've been trying to do my best. You know, being unsure, being uncertain not having all the answers. Like I said before, like I feel like I used to have to have all the answers. I used to feel like I did have all the answers about a lot of stuff. And like I said before, I, I'm unsure. I'm still unfolding. And I'm enjoying the wonder of this mysterious life. I'm okay with it. I do have peace. I'm okay. I'm okay with not being okay. I'm okay with being human and being humane are you if we're comfortable we're not growing right I'm so uncomfortable in almost every area of my life right now and that's why I have a professional to oversee every area that's important to me of my life right now but that's me, my pastor and friends. That's me. I know the areas of my life that I need to be tough in and allow others to be tough with me in. But what about you? What are you going to be willing to do this week? You know, today, after you're done listening to this, Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. I had to. I'm sorry. Okay. Who are you going to call? Who are you going to reach out to? Who are you going to allow in? What new questions are you going to ask? What new things are you going to allow yourself to be uncertain with that maybe you've been certain about your whole life? Are you willing to go there? Because I feel like that is what makes this life so beautiful. Continually going to places that we are unsure about. Well, um, there we go. I mean, I don't, I don't want to just sit here and repeat myself a million, million times over in different ways, different, you know. So I'm going to start closing things down here. Um, I don't know how many meet the new Greg parts I'm going to do. You know, this is part two. I don't know what we're going to transition to next, and I'm okay with that. Just stay tuned. Come along for the ride. And uh, as you can see, I jump all over the place and, and some of you probably don't like that. And I'm okay with that because this is the Carfus podcast, my, 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 my Carfus. I'm your host, Greg Gross. So, I mean, that's just, that's just what this is. all. That's why it's, that's just, this, that's why it's the Carfus, man. That's why we, we're just, you never know when there's going to be a U-turn or a swerve or a detour, whatever other analogy I can use. Some of you guys want more structure and that's the problem. That's the problem. We're, we're just going. Open road. Squirrel. Right? We're just going. So, um, stay tuned. Hey, maybe 
Maybe we'll jump into another Uber Lyft episode. Uh, since I moved to Erie, it's crazy out here, my passenger friends. There's some other crazy stories I could share with you. I did that with Wisconsin. Go back and listen to that one if you'd like. But maybe I'll do another uh, Uber Lyft episode. Um, maybe not next week, but stay tuned. Hey, if you got any topics, got any things you want me to dig into? Um, again, I don't have the answers. I, I'm still unfolding. Um, but I'd be willing to share where I'm at with some things or where I think I'm at, question mark, I don't know. So let me know, comment, reach out to me, see where this goes. Just want to thank everybody again for uh, sharing, subscribing, liking, commenting, you know, all the things, passing this on. And that's the thing, guys, if this is adding value to your life or you think something in this episode or other episodes would add value to somebody's life, don't keep it to yourself it's kind of like a rule of thumb in life. Like if something is, is helping us, if something is helping moving our life forward, even if it's a sentence or a word, a topic, whatever, pass it on to somebody else. Go add value to somebody else. I'm not saying every episode or this episode or any, you know, it's going to help everybody or resonate with everybody. I mean, that's pretty hard to do. But if you think this could help someone or is this helping you share it, share it. My, my goal is, yes, this has been therapeutic for me, but if, Something in here can help somebody else move forward in their life in any area. That's what it's all about, too. I want to add value to people's lives and go places that uh, maybe other people aren't willing to go and help people get to places other people aren't willing to help people get to. Right? So, again, thank you. This is fun. Isn't this fun? Absolutely. This is, this is exhilarating. Okay. All right. Well, all right, my passenger friends. I hope you enjoyed your ride today in my Carfus. I hope it helped you in your current location or towards your next destination. Until next time, be well.